I've had three or four other people look at it. They kind of give me the same boilerplate feedback, but they don't really tell you. What would you do if you spent months building your cold email campaign? You've got all the software, you built your list, you launched the campaigns. Then three months later, nothing. This is Sean, and three months ago, he thought that cold email would rapidly scale his business, but there was barely any positive replies. It was tough to get people booked on a call, and he started wondering if cold email was actually just some overhyped BS. So he reached out to me and said, hey, can I pay you to fix this? And I said, no, reason being, way too many people are making the exact same mistakes that he's making. So I came back with a counter offer, and I said, I'll just do it for free if you just let me record the video so that we can share it with more people. And he said, let's do it. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I'm fixing Sean's cold email campaign and show you real foundational stuff that gets results so that you can fix your campaign and ultimately grow your business with cold email. Let's get into it. Sean, what's going down, man? How are we feeling? What's happening? Happy to be here. Excited to uh, learn a bit more about uh, how we can start improving our uh, cold email here at Modern Pulse. Let's do it. Why don't we just give a quick two second rundown of who you are, what you do, uh, all that good stuff. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a uh, local SEO agency called Modern Pulse. We help a lot of local service businesses, roofers, contractors, home remodelers show up higher on Google and uh, land more jobs. Well, let's get into your cold email status and then let's see if we can help you land some more jobs. How's that sound? Sounds great to me, man. So after talking to you, the three main things that we want to cover today are the messaging, testing frameworks, and differentiated offer that is also scalable, repeatable. That's what we talked about. Is that right? The biggest problems? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're definitely the, the, the biggest problems we're having right now. But before we get into it, just want to give a quick rundown of like what cold email actually means. Because I think a lot of people think, oh, I can just like send a bunch of emails and I'm going to get all these responses. It's really glamorized on social media. It's really glamorized from a lot of these people who make it out to seem like it's cost an effect all of the time, but most of the time, this is what people do. This is what CEOs, founders do when they're receiving a cold email from somebody. They're like, what the heck is this? Why do I want this? That's not how we want to do cold email. We want people to be pumped and excited to see this email that we're sending this person and be willing to respond and say, almost be like grateful, right? And the problem that I see a lot of people do with cold email is, you know, they're not building trust in the email. It's such like a take tonality, right? That's not how it works with cold email because they don't know you. There's no establishment of brand. It's just some random person showing up in my email inbox. So there's no trust established. So we want to really, really establish that in cold email. They're not sending like relevant emails, not sending enough volume. That's another thing. I think people send 300 emails and all of a sudden they're like, oh, this doesn't work. If I were to run an ad on Instagram, let's call it, and I got 300 views, would I really expect people to respond? Probably not. So volume is definite and definitely king. And then also like not thinking full funnel. Like I think people just think, oh, I just want to reply. Reply rate is my only metric that I'm actually going to measure, but we need to think about what happens after they reply and make sure that we're actually set up to handle the business and get them from cold to a book call and ultimately to sold. Okay. So let's break it down just a little bit further. So First things first, complete stranger, this is the list. So when we're building lists, we want to build lists with the intentionality of, is this person actually going to find what I'm sending relevant? So if, if you're working with home service companies, I'm probably not gonna build a list that has plumbing, roofing, da 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 da, because they all have too many niches within a list because what a roofer and a handyman are gonna find relevant are probably gonna be a lot different. Deliverability, so do I have the infrastructure to do this at scale? Do I have multiple emails set up? Am I sending from one email? Am I sending 30 emails a day? Uh, you did a great job of doing this and you have a system for that, which is really, really solid. But this is where it gets even more important is, is the copy. So we have the list that's relevant. We wanna make sure that the copy is going to make it worth it for them to be interested in learning more. So we saw that picture earlier of the dude just like doing that. Like that's what most people feel when they receive a cold email. Yeah. What we want them to feel is like, let's go, this is dope. And then lastly is the sales process. Mm -hmm. Is our process dialed so I can get the per person that's actually interested to book a call and potentially do business with us, which is also important because it's cool to get replies if you have a 6% reply rate, but if you're not booking any calls and you're not actually converting them, like what, what does that even matter? So we just need to zoom out and think full process. Got it. Let's take a look at your business after looking at you. So SEO service to local businesses. I think this is a solid offer. There's a lot of people that do it. So that's like one thing that kind of sucks. Also SEO to businesses. If I'm a business and I hear SEO, I think 12 months expensive. This, is, this isn't gonna directly correlate to business, right? Well, that's probably what you hear quite a bit. So what we wanna do is we wanna be able to just correlate that to 
outcomes of the customers, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. You're sending around 400 emails a day. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. You said that the performance reply rate has always been the core issue holding it back from scaling. Yeah. Yeah. Any other context on this? Yeah. So we get, uh, We'll get some replies, right? But it's it's more of a roller coaster, and they're not always positive. It, it's just hard to to balance, like seeing reply rates kind of go up and down, and then want to scale when there's no consistency there. Okay, let's look at your campaign. So this is a snapshot. I think of the last few months, November to to now. Mm-hmm. So you've sent around twenty two hundred emails with a four point two one percent reply rate, which I think is really really solid, man. Six opportunities. Is this accurate? Yeah. So positive replies. A few of them are book calls. Not all of them. Okay. So out of twenty two hundred emails, four percent reply rate, which would be less than ten percent positive replies. Yeah. And then you're sending around one hundred ninety one per day. So what are you currently seeing from like the replies? Cause you had have around like 90 replies here. Is it just like, I'm not interested or what's like the, the typical reply that you're getting? Yeah. Um, a large or a majority of them are kind of just not interested. And then even when they are interested, we're just finding it hard. Like you said, that full funnel aspect to really dive in and, and find a way to get a positive reply to book a meeting. And currently we have three active campaigns as of yesterday from when I looked mm-hmm. and pretty solid reply rates across the board. This one, you have just haven't sent enough. 1300 here, 642 cents, 120 cents here, consistently getting 4% or more, which is pretty solid. I think the red flag that I'm hearing you say is just the opportunities in the positive reply. So let's look at your copy and your sequences, how you have it set up. You're doing good with like the spin tax and you're testing a lot of different subject lines, testing a lot of different copy mm-hmm. and angles. Each one of these openers is a different angle right? Some you're saying, I noticed your competitor showing up first on Google. And then some of them are like, Hey, we'll help you get more jobs, et cetera, et cetera. And then let's dig into these openers. When I looked at like F and D, it was a clear winner of a 3%, 3 3.76%. These to me are outliers with the volume that you're sending. I think the end of the day, we should just be sending a little bit more volume and and trusting the process a little bit more. I don't know if if you can get more leads, but my eyes, I want to send at least a thousand a day. That'd be my goal because four replies, five replies, like 134 cents doesn't tell me like, oh, we for sure need to do this and go all in on this. So if we look at your emails of like the 1.5% reply rate versus the 3.76% reply rate, the copy on the 1.5% reply rate says, most SEO agencies say ranking for roof repair services in Holly Springs, which is their city, takes over 12 months. That's because they're using outdated strategy that Google stopped prioritizing years ago. Black Sheep Construction, the client, could be ranking at the top with nailed it roof and above all roofing in construction, which is their competitors, in four to five months with the right approach. We made a quick video showing how Black Sheep Construction could rank first on Google and land more jobs. Should I send it your way? So that's the 1.5% reply rate. Dope copy, personalization, calling out the competitors, hitting their pain, doing a little bit of scarcity. But then let's look at the 3.76% one. Hey, Mike, we help local businesses show up at the top of Google so they can land more jobs from search. Currently, Black Sheep Construction client isn't showing up when people search for roof repair services in Holly Springs City. Nailed it roofing and above all roofing and construction are landing those jobs instead. We put together a quick video showing how Black Sheep Construction could show up first on Google and book more jobs. Want me to send it over? Why do you feel like this one might have double the reply rates? Yeah, I think uh, that one just kind of gets to the point quicker and uh, and, and shares uh, like an, an ideal outcome kind of front and center rather than kind of overloading them with info that they have to process and then understanding what they get out of it. So I think with like those local business owners, it's about get to the point quicker is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think the messaging is way more simple. It's outcome driven, right? We're just talking about landing more jobs, right? This is talking about most SEO says ranking for roof repair services. It's like the same thing as landing more jobs. This is more interest speaking, I guess you can say. And it doesn't mention anything about SEO. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that, honestly. It says at the top of Google, but like that could mean multiple different things. You could even like remove the top of Google or like change the framing a little bit where Mm -hmm. it's like we help local businesses show up when customers are searching, something along those lines that makes it even more simple. Yeah. And it's like super easy to read. Like I could just, I could, my read time on this is from an email perspective, from a scan perspective is super, super quick. Land more jobs from search and then see some of my competitors. Boom. So just like messaging tips overall, again, clients 
they only care about the outcome. They don't care about SEO. They don't care about ranking first. They don't care about being on the first page of Google. They don't care about backlinking. They don't care about getting blogs for their website. They don't care about that. They just care about getting more deals, landing money. Seventh grade reading level. So like what I like to do if I'm writing copy is I'll just pop my copy into ChatGPT and I'll say, make this seventh grade reading level. And mm -hmm. then it'll simplify it even, even more. Under ID characters and then just direct to the niche. Like no need to get fancy with anything. I think this is fairly direct and could go there. So I think right. that's pretty solid. And this is probably your closest one to it. Yeah, now yeah, that from, you're saying that, I can definitely see some some improvements that could be made there, but uh, totally. hear what you're saying there. Let's talk about your offer, AKA like how do we get people, because you're getting a lot of replies, yeah. but you're not getting a lot of like positive replies who are booking calls and ultimately getting deals. That's why we're doing this for you. So currently we're offering, we put together a quick video showing how Black Sheep Construction could show up on Google and book more jobs. You want me to send it over. Then what we're doing is we're sending an email. As promised, I'm sharing the audit I prepared, which you send pretty quickly. I think this was in like 12 minutes. As promised, I'm sharing the audit I prepared. And then you send an audit recording. And then you send the notes and then the infographic. And then if anything in the audit raised your questions or you need a second opinion, feel free to reach out. And if you'd like to walk through everything in more detail, I'm happy to hop on a call. So this is really valuable information for them. But the problem is it's kind of like a fire hose coming at me right now. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is yeah. a lot of information that I need to digest. Mm -hmm. Let me just watch the recording. The, the recording is 13 minutes long. Again, super valuable information from your point of view, but like from the client's point of view, it might be like a little information overload and a mm -hmm. little bit too hard to digest yeah. and too long to digest. And I also think like they've seen this a lot where it's like, oh, sure, send me a video. It's not really like irresistible and it's not really something like quantifiable. It's more just like, thanks for the video. Cool. Yeah, I've, I've gotten like where I... I gave them a call after and they're kind of like, they're so unintrigued by it. So yeah. they're like, oh yeah, I'll get to it. They haven't even watched it. Or if they did, it, thousand percent. it just wasn't like exciting enough. So thousand percent. And that's where I like to put myself in like customer shoes. If we're doing this for like home service companies, think of a roofer. Yeah. They're not marketers. They don't really know what SEO is. What we're sending them, it's just going to be like jargon and basically they're going to hear Chinese. Like why would they watch a video about showing up on Google? Because if they're never going to do it, like that doesn't really matter. And then like what happens when they watch the video? Like they're just going to be almost fire hosed as, as kind of what I alluded to in the email. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the video is just like super long, pretty jargon filled. And then it's just like hard to transition from a book call because then it's like, oh, I'll watch the video. Oh, I'll watch the video. They're just going to use that as a crutch. Yeah. Right. Do you think it's, it's like tough. front loading too much value and then leaving nothing to like get them on a call? Like there's no reason to hop on a call if I give them all of this? Pretty much. And then also like it adds value from an information perspective, yeah. but it's not like a tangible thing that they can touch and feel. So let's just talk about like the process, like your current process is can I send you an audit? You send an email and then we follow up and hope they book in. What I would suggest is we come up with better offers, like really banger offers. And then within two minutes, to claim the offer, we jump on a 15 minute call. So it goes offer to call. And then that's when you jump on a call with them, get them on a call and you can fulfill the offer that you're promising them, of course. But usually on that call, it tends to lead to more of like a discovery call and a sales call. Got it. So what we need to work on is like the offers. What I would suggest is instead of like saying, hey, quick video, blah, 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 blah. I would come up with something that you're currently doing that people pay for that you could just give away, mm -hmm. essentially, whether that's like a free landing page, optimize their Google account, optimize their homepage, like a that's interesting. $2,000 audit, like first 20 leads free, something along those lines that people can like touch, feel, and like actually experience. And there's also skin in the game from both of you guys. And I think that builds the reciprocity and that ultimately makes converting a lot, a lot easier. Yeah. Because I can't imagine this costs too much money from you guys to do. From a cost per acquisition perspective, I think it would balance out. And I think a lot of the people that would say yes to this sort of stuff would hopefully convert into a job. Yeah. So it seems like I, I try to hit on some of these subjects on that video, but I think what I'm doing is I'm just leaving them with kind of like more questions instead of like you're saying, like give them value. I thought the video was value, but I'm seeing now like optimizing their homepage for free. It leaves them with whether or not they go with us, they still got something out of it instead of like a video that just leaves them with a lot more questions. Totally. And it's like a lot of like macro, like what we talked about earlier, like a lot of macro information versus this is like more micro problems. And then let's talk about angles, which also correlates to like testing. So again, most people go broad, they try and sell all macro solutions. So like they're just too wide, which is kind of like what we're doing. Then they sell deliverables for, versus outcome, which you're not, you're doing a good job of not doing that, at least for the one that got good replies. So what we should sell or what we should test is the problems that the niches are most aware of. Mm -hmm. So for example, like, what do you think a plumber is 
most aware of from a problem perspective? Like what are they most problem aware of? Probably not that they need blogs or anything like that. Like what comes to your mind? Yeah, I'd say like uh, they want more revenue and to do that, they need to land more jobs. What else from like SEO contextual or like website contextual? Would you say that they're aware of makes a difference that correlates to landing more jobs? Yeah, it's it has to do with their Google business profile a lot. They don't even really mention the website too much. I think that's kind of an afterthought. It's like too much when they're thinking about it. They'll they'll talk about the Google business profile and be like, yeah, I tried to set this up, but I don't know exactly how to do it because there's a lot of nuance to it. So I'd say like Google business profile is, is something they're always talking about. Love it. So. With that, based off of what they're saying, that's what I would begin to like market as the problem and then come up with the offer around that specific problem. And like you kind of took the words out of my mouth, but the problem would be like the Google profile, like they're setting up wrong. So in your copy, it would be talk to a lot of roofers and they set up their Google profile pretty bad and they're missing out on a ton of jobs. Would love to do this completely for free for you. Uh, is this something that you'd be interested in? Whatever, something along those lines. And then that's the copy of the email. And then once they say yes, boom, let's jump on a call, you know that optimizing the Google is just a small piece of, of the big pie that yeah. actually gets them business. So that's like an example. Another example is like, yeah, showing up for some Google and then like a competitor check. I don't know if that's too valuable. Another one would be free call tracking setup so they can see like where their leads are coming from. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's something that you do, but more like niche, like most yeah. contractors don't have strong services pages. Maybe they're aware of that, which hurts the rankings. You'll do a free service page plan so they can rank higher and get more job requests. So more niche types of problems that we can test and then just make it around like a niche problem and then an offer that's actually banger that you could do to get them to be like, okay, yeah, I'm aware of that problem. This is awesome. They're willing to do this for free. Oh, so you're segmenting campaigns by problem yep. and offer. Okay, that's yeah. probably what I would do. And then the beautiful thing is, is if you have that list, like you can just reuse the list in multiple different campaigns. Like a month later, you send the other problem essentially because they're not going to remember you. Like that's the thing. But overall, man, like your messaging is pretty solid. I think if we just come up with really good offers and angles would be dialed from a testing framework. What was the other problem that you said? I think if we just test offers and then just do more volume to those offers, I think that's what we test is just like Google my business offer, you know, service page offer or whatever they're actually saying and most aware of, like, don't, don't make it up. That's what we're testing. And then differentiated offer that's providing not a video, but we're willing to you know, do their Google for free. And then ultimately at the end of the day, I think just more volume is key. And then if we set up an instantly reply agent mm -hmm. that can reply within five minutes for you, and then just optimize your sales process on getting them on a call after they say yes, because you're gonna have a lot more positive replies. Yeah. But I think if you can like, just be really keen on following up with these people, you'll be pretty good. Awesome. What questions do you have? I was wondering like the, uh, the reply agent, the current offer, it's hard because you have to like record the video and then send it over. But I'm, I'm guessing like, what you're trying to do is position the offer in a way to where I can just quickly reply and just get them on a call before I'm doing it. Dope. Absolutely happy to help with setting up that Google. Let's book in 15 minutes so I can strategize and understand your business a little bit more before, wow, jump, before jumping into it. And then once you find like winning problem offer, are you doing anything else within that campaign or within that testing to further test to see if you can improve any let's say reply rates or positive reply rates or is it you kind of just like hey i found this problem and offer and then i'm just scaling that to the moon with what has worked so far i mean that's what marketing is it's hearing the same thing over and over and over again until they finally say yes so i say we find a winning offer is it the google page whatever it could be and then we scale that up and then we can test within that offer but right now we got to find the winning offer is it a landing page is it a google my business optimization all that sort of stuff dude this has been really awesome. Like before I was kind of like lost on what campaigns I should run, how I should run them, like where I should go once I see that something's working. I've had three or four other people look at it. They kind of give me the same boilerplate feedback, but they don't really tell you what needs to go into that message, how you translate your offer in a way that's digestible and palatable for the end user. I'm excited to take what I've learned here, launch some new campaigns. I have a sneaky suspicion that it's going to like, it's going to blow everything I've done in the past out of water. I think so too. Dope, man. Thanks for doing this. Of course. Thank you for doing this for me. Now in this video, we focused on Sean's cold email campaign, but fixing something is always easier than setting something up from scratch. So if you want to learn how to set up a cold email campaign completely from scratch, click on the video on the screen to check out the next one where I not only build a cold email campaign from scratch, but also start a brand new business as a challenge and use cold email to get my first sale within 10 hours. So I'll see you over there.